Hey y'all, Coach in the Fire here. Got Sister Ann with me. Hey everybody. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the morning star. All right. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at the Hebrew for the morning star to understand what it is. But first, we want to start over here at Google. When I simply typed in Morning Star, now it wanted to change the name, but in, we want to see in the Bible that it is actually two words. So, you want to read what it says there? When I Googled Morning Star. It says, there are multiple matches for the Morning Star, including the planet Venus, a star, a book, and a wealth platform. The planet Venus is often called the morning star when it appears in the eastern sky before sunrise. Venus is the biggest planet and is sometimes called a star because of its alignment in the sky and proximity to the sun. So that's one of them. One of the, the options, like I said, when you Google it, this is what we're told. He said there are multiple um, hits. So let's click down where it says show more. And let's read the next one. The star Cyrus is also called the morning star when it appears in the sky just before sunrise from early July to mid-September. The significance of that one is that it's early July to mid-September. Right. All right. You want to read the next one? The planet Mercury is sometimes called the morning star when it appears in the east before sunrise. But this is less common. So there are three that they know of that somebody in history has declared to be the morning star. Now, I did a search through the scripture and, well, I got some help from the artificial intelligence to look through all of the religious texts to find if ever those planets were named and said, this is the morning star and know where he can find where it actually names them. It's really only in the other texts, the astrology, the astronomy, the religious, not necessarily scriptural, but subsequent religious texts and other mystical documents that you find a direct relationship sometimes, and you don't even find it all the time. Like for instance, in the Zohar, it's not named, but a lot of additional information is given. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. Like some of this other stuff here, I don't, I don't know about this novel or this wealth platform. Um, I did find it interesting, some particular stocks that claim to be the Morningstar.inc. I may have to pull it up on the um, show an image of it because yesterday the value of that particular stock, it was called Morning, the value of that particular stock was at $333.32. Okay. That was yesterday. But what we getting out of this, and I wanted, I wanted to show you, is that the common understanding is that it is these planets, particularly these two planets. Because this other one is not necessarily a, a planet, but a star. And it comes around every time at the same year. It's not wandering. These other two are wandering. And that's going to be significant when we see the verses. All right. So we'll go over to BibleGateway.com or any search engine. But what we're going to do is look in the Names of God translation. All right. Now, you know, I prefer the King James Version, but it doesn't give you all of these hits when you put in Morning Star that we're going to see here. You see, there are six. You want to you wanna read some of these? Revelations 22 and 16. Yeshua, I have sent my angel to give this testimony to you for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David. I am the bright morning star. Okay. Now here we hear that he's saying directly that he is the morning star. Right. Now that's going to be important, especially when we start talking about Isaiah. 
Now, let's look at Job. Job 38 and 7. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Okay, so now you see that there are multiple morning stars. Okay. This suggesting that they are or could be also somehow related to these wandering stars. Like there's a certain time of the year where you would have these two wandering stars in the sky together, maybe even all three, if you including the stationary star that we heard about back over there at Google. All right, so now the interesting part about this verse is that it's talking about how you have the morning stars singing together, and then you have the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Now, this verse is going to be really important when we get to Isaiah chapter 14, because it's also mentioned in the word sun there, when it says son of the dawn. You want to read that one? Isaiah 14 and 12. How you have fallen from heaven, you morning star, son of the dawn. How you have been cut down to the ground, you conquerors of nations. So now this is one of the popular hits when you will Google the morning star, is that it's referring to the son of the dawn. Right. A lot of translations have translated that into Lucifer, right. the son of light or a being of light. But notice that it says son of the dawn. And up here it says sons of Elohim. So when we come to Isaiah 14 and 12 and look at the Hebrew, the concordance or lexicon, I'm not sure what this is called. But when you look behind the scenes of what was actually written, you see this Lucifer Son Lucifer is Strong's number 1966, which is Hillel. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this Strong's 1966 is you only find it one time in the Bible. It's Lucifer. I mean, you see a 1966 in the New Testament, but that's going to be a whole different because that's Greek. Right. So as far as Hillel is concerned, you only see it one time in the Bible, and that's in Isaiah 14. So what they've translated into the morning star, Lucifer, is actually this other word you see here, Hillel. Because when you read it, it says, how you are fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning. So that's definitely a mistranslation to say that that's Lucifer because it's talking about the son of the dawn, the same as we saw over in the verse, son of the dawn. And then up here in Job, it talks about sons of Elohim. So you have the morning star and then you have the sons of Elohim. One could argue that the Messiah is also a son of a particular Elohim, our father, creator. But you have the sons of the Elohim, and this one down here that Isaiah is talking about is this one that has fallen, and his name is Hillel. But let's go back to the concordance and look more at this, what this is saying as far as the morning. You see that this Strong's number is 7837. It looks like sha cha Definition is dawn. It means dawn. Mm -hmm. Now, that should remind you of why we wake up at dawn and pray. Because this is what we're going to find if we continue to the end. I think this may be a long video. It may end up in three parts over the course of months to actually get this nailed down. But we're going to find an importance in the dawn. And that's, that's what this is talking about. The morning stars dancing at dawn. Okay, so let's look up this 7837. And we see when it is used, it's about 25, anywhere between 17 and 25 times. We see it in not only in Isaiah 14, but we see it in 8 and 20. And we see it in 47 and 11. But look back here, you also see it in Job. We didn't see those other verses, those verses either. So in other words, this particular word, 
Shachara is used all this many times in the Bible, but it is translated as morning because watch this. You see, you start there at Genesis 19 and 15 when I put in 7837. But if I just look for morning, you see verses 5, 8, 13, 19, 23, 21, all from chapter 1. And when you look, it's all saying, and there was evening and there was morning. And so it's counting out the days. And so when you look closely at this, you see that it's not Shachara, but it is Bokara, but it's translated as morning. So my point is, is that both are translated as morning. And so when you're looking in the scripture, you see all these Bokaras, but you only see Shachara when it's not talking about the day. But it's actually talking about Elohim, sons of the Elohim. You want to read that verse? Genesis 19 and 15. And when the morning dawned, then urged to hurry the angels, Lot said, Arise, take your wife and two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. Tell them what's going on there. This is when the two angels or um, admonishing a lot to hurry up and get out of the city because they were about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so this is when they're having a visitation from sons of Elohim. So that's the difference between this dawn and the other dawn. The other dawn is a time of day, where this is a time of a different kind of dawn. Let's go back over to the verses and see what kind of dawn we could be talking about. One of the reasons why we chose the name of God translation is because we see 2 Peter. You want to read that? 2 Peter 1, 19. So we regard the words of the prophets as confirmed beyond all doubt. You're doing well by paying attention to their words. Continue to pay attention as you would to a light that shines in a dark place as you wait for day to come and the morning star to rise in your hearts. So this is also what we hear about down here in the book of Revelation. Revelations 2 and 28. I will also give them the morning star. So he's talking about just to put it in a word that people may understand, Christ consciousness. The awakening of Christ consciousness is what Peter is talking about. And when we're putting all of this together, what we see is that it's related to not a time of day, but a celestial event that takes place periodically. But before we get out of this, let's look at this one. I found this interesting in Luke 24. Some of the women from our group startled us. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They told us that they had seen angels who said that he's alive. So here again, you see the word morning star related to visitations. From sons of Elohim. We understand this one to be Michael. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking back over here and you're looking at, okay, you see all these Bukharas versus Shacharas. So you got to come all the way down to Job 41 and 18. His sneezing flashed forth light and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. So again, we're talking about the Elohim. But that's when we're searching for morning. Watch what happens when we search for Shachara, Strong's number 7837. You see Job 3 and 9, which says, Maybe dark the stars of this morning may look for light, but have none and not see the dawning of the day. So let's look at that in a more standard translation. Verse 1 says, after this, Job finally opened his mouth and cursed the day he was born. So he's cursing the day. So that's what he says about his day. 
Let his stars turn dark before dawn. Let it hope for light and receive none. Let it not see the first light of dawn, because it did not shut the doors of the womb from which I came or hid my eyes from trouble. Okay, so he's saying, let not the morning star shine on his birthday, the day he was born. Let it be a dark day. But let's look at some of the other verses that mention 7837. Like we talked about Genesis 19 and 15. What about Genesis 32 and 24? And was left Jacob alone and wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Don't tell him what that's talking about. This is referring to when Jacob wrestled with the angel asking for a blessing. Yeah, so he's been wrestling with his angel all night. Or if we're not talking about a time period, he's been wrestling with his angel for as long as the darkness has continued. And now we're at this particular kind of dawn where he's wrestling with these sons of the Elohim. And he's about to be released and he's asking, like you said, for a blessing. When we go to the next time it's mentioned is in the same chapter, verse 26. And he said, let me go for breaks today. But he said, not. I will let you go, except if you bless me. So the Elohim is saying that the dawn is coming. I need to go because they are supposed to go do the dance at the dawn. And, but Jacob has a hold of him saying, no, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And is that when he touched his hip? Mm -hmm. So that's why he got a blessing. It's or how he got a blessing through the touching of that hip. But notice again, when you're talking about this particular kind of dawn, it's associated with Elohim. This is the third time it's mentioned, or the second time you've, it's mentioned if you count in chapters. Then we get to Joshua 6 or 15. But it came to pass on the day seventh that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city in the manner the seven times only one day that they marched around the city seven times. And so here's when the walls of Jericho fell. Right. So divine intervention. Something supernatural going on on this particular day. This was when they crossed the River Jordan. And this was the first sign that they was actually going to get the land back that they were promised. And it's occurring at the dawn. Mm -hmm. but not necessarily dawn as in 4.22 a.m., but dawn as in these morning stars. That's what Job was talking about. Let his day be without a morning star. So particular times of the year, you can go out there and you won't see a morning star. We're going to get to that when we get back to Isaiah. Like I said, if we go far enough. The next time we see it is up here in Judges 19 and 25. But not would the man heed him, so took the man his concubine and brought her out to them outside. And they knew her and abused her all night until morning. And when they let her go, began to break the day. You want to tell us what that is? This was when the, the man, I forget his name. Well, they took his concubine and they abused her all night long and when he went outside, she was at the doorstep, the threshold, I would think. And this is what it's talking about. She had made it to the threshold and fell on the threshold as if she was trying to get in right. and died right there at the threshold. Mm -hmm. So this is not necessarily talking about the sons of the Elohim, right. sons of Bilal, but that would be sons of the sons of the Elohim. You can also think of it as they abused her all night until the angels came and released her or something of that nature. I don't know. And when they let her go, because they abused her until um, yeah, she was released. I see what you're saying. And you can also say that they, seeing that the dawn was coming. Right. That's what broke it up. Hey, man, y'all see dawn is dawning. You know, how you going to continue in that manner right. if you know such things, right? Show our respect for the day. The next time is up in Samuel. 
And they rose early, and it was about the dawning of the day. They called Samuel to Saul on the top of the house, saying, Get up, that I may send you on your way. And arose Saul and went, the two of them, he and Saul, outside. Well, what about books like Nehemiah? So he labored in the work, and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until appeared the stars. Again, showing respect for the day. So what did they do? All took a break. Right. All went and prayed. All put the spears down. Then we have the verses from Job. Right. We talked about all of those. All right, let's jump down here to Isaiah. Did we look at this one? Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if not, they do speak according to word. This it is because there is no in them light. All right, you want to read it from the Names of God Bible? They should go to the teachings and to the written instructions. If people don't speak these words, it is because it doesn't dawn on them. So the morning star is not shining on them. Hmm. Makes sense. Hmm. That's why it talks about in those verses, like the book of Revelation, there will be certain that will get the morning star, implying that there are others who will not. Then you have Isaiah 47 and 11. You feel safe in your wickedness and say, no one can see me. Your wisdom and knowledge have led you astray. So you say to yourself, I'm the only one and there's no one else. But evil will happen to you. You won't know how to keep it away. Disaster will strike you. You won't be able to stop it. Destruction will overtake you suddenly. You won't expect it. You say, well, where is the dawn in here? In the concordance or in the lexicon, it says, therefore shall come. Evil upon you, not you will know from where it comes and shall fall upon you trouble, not you will be able to put it off and shall come upon you sudden desolation, not which ye shall know. So where is Shachara? That is right there. It's being translated as the word from where it arises. So if you think about this, it's saying, because you put off the law, is that what the verse said? Because you didn't speak these words, you're not going to know the morning star. You're not going to know when it arises. And you're only going to have trouble. The morning star is supposed to be a time when we all are awakened. Like we saw back there in the crossing of the River Jordan, that was the time when the walls of Jericho fell. And if they know about the morning star or not, they were led by the Elohim at the time of the morning star, doing what they were supposed to be doing, raising or elevating their spirits. And so now you have here saying that they're going to lose this morning star. They're not going to have it. They're not going to have this enlightenment. So what this speaks to is when we're all waiting for this great awakening, all expected to be changed in a moment, there were some who would change in this manner. Maybe. I don't want to add too much, but it could be that there are some who will be changed in a manner of awakening and hope, while those who are blinded to the morning star could be awakened to destruction. What is it? Destruction will overtake them, and they won't know where from where it's coming from. So I think we're going to end the video there. Okay. Want to say any closing comments? I think we're going to have to cover it some more. Answer some more in some other videos. And I did say some of the videos. Um, but anything you learned or anything you'd like to learn in the next video? I just think that it definitely helps to have the Hebrew definition of it. I think that's probably the only way. To really truly get an understanding of uh, what it's talking about because of the different ways that, you know, that same word is being used. So. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. All right. With that, I believe we're going to close this video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. 
If you didn't hit the dislike button, but consider leaving a comment either way. Stacy and I both admit that we're new to this subject. Right. And you know, we basically know as much as we know at this point. Well, not quite. I <laughs> got a few more videos to talk about. But this is a novel idea and it would be much appreciated if you guys would help collaborate down in the comment section so we can, you know, try to put together some better videos in the future. And I'll see you down there. See you in the comments. Shalom.